All right, take your Bible, turn the book of Proverbs. Uh, look up on the screen. What do I have up here? What is this? You guys are pretty smart. You're, I'll tell you what, you guys are smarter than modern translations of the Bible. Which doesn't take much. And I'll explain that here in a minute. Um, God laid a, a, a message. You know, sometimes the Bible says preach the word. And God just sort of laid this on my heart the other day. Uh, I said Proverbs. I meant Ecclesiastes. The one after Proverbs. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4. God laid a message on my heart. And actually, as I was thinking about it, there's several messages here, several different applications to this one thing. Notice that he, he starts out in verse 9 and says two are better than one. He does not say two of this particular thing is better than one particular thing. The Bible leaves it open and then God gives multiple ways of th how this is applied in our lives or how God does this one thing many different ways in our life. And when it comes to the threefold cord, there's good ways of looking at this and there is bad ways of looking at this. And what I'm going to do this morning is we're going to deal with the bad news first. All right. So Ecclesiastes chapter 4, let's start in verse 9 and then we'll pray and I'll explain to you. I did, I looked at the NIV, I looked at the Holman Christian Standard Bible, which is the Southern Baptist, their own translation. Looked at the New American Standard Version and they all say it wrong. And I'll explain how in a minute. The language, the English words mean something. Okay, they do. They mean something. And we'll find that out. Two are better than one. Think of your Bible. There's one application. You have out of the mouth of two witnesses or three Shall every word be established? That actually goes to the threefold cord. We'll get into that. That's a different message. But you have testaments. You have two unique, different testaments in your Bible. And they are both there for a reason. There are some, like the Church of Christ says, that the Old Testament has no relevance for us whatsoever. That we're in the New Testament times and the Old Testament doesn't mean anything. There are some fundamentalists who, who believe that way, and I don't. I think, I think you can read the Old and New Testament, and God give you as much out of one as He does the other. And I don't, I don't see that they are contradictory to one another. I see they are complementary to one another. Two are better than one. How many times does Christ come to this earth? Twice, not just once. And the second time is better than the first time. Okay? How many births will you have? Okay? Two, having two births is better than having one birth. See how it, if, you, if God leaves it open, there's just many ways that you can apply this. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. That's why, Roy, you should wear a belt and suspenders. <laughs> Amen? Two are better than one. If the one fall, the other will hold him up. Huh? You hope. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone. Watch this now. Put this in your mind. Woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Let me explain something to you. You will fall. You will fall. You might fall off the wagon. But you will fall. Just man falleth seven times, the Bible says. 
You're going to fail in life. You're going to, even in church, you're going to do things that are wrong. It's better that you're not alone when these things take place. That you have a good church that is willing to love you, willing to restore you, willing to forgive you, willing to pick you up and help you along. That's what, that's why I keep preaching some of the things I keep preaching to this church. Not necessarily to those listening online, but to this particular church. Why is it better? That you come and sit in the pews so that you know you're not alone. Now, it could be that some people want to be alone for a reason. Because maybe they want to fall and stay there. Sometimes that happens. And when it does, you won't see them. They won't come. They've got it in their mind that they're going to fall. I, I was made aware that a man that I've known practically all my life, he grew up in this church and listened to the exact same sermons that I listened to. And all his life, he said that he believed it. He said he believed the Bible. He said he believed in Jesus. He said he believed in God. Now the man's an, an avowed atheist. Doesn't even believe in God. It's, it's not that he doesn't believe the way our church believes. He doesn't believe the way any church believes anymore. And what he wanted was, he wanted to be alone when he fell. Because he didn't want anybody picking him back up. You know what atheism is an excuse for? And it is an excuse. Because we know that there is a God. Atheism is an excuse to allow a man to do whatever he wants to do without feeling conviction over it. I would rather have the conviction. What I just said was, I am not going to do everything right. And I'd rather have the conviction that goes with not doing right. So that I learn and do better and do right. So, if they fall, woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not other to help him up. Guys, that's why God gave you a wife. Wives, that's why God gave you a husband. Now, I know that some of you are having to live without that. And that's when God promises he'd never leave you nor forsake you, ever. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. What they used to call a three-dog night. What's a three-dog night? That's a very cold night, and you let all three dogs in the bed to keep your bed warm. Now, it don't smell the best, but back when they put dogs in the bed, who did? Amen? But how can one be warm... Alone. And I think there's more than one kind of warmth. Amen. Verse 12. If one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And then, underline this in your Bible, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And there is, like I said, when God laid that on my heart, I just, I was just going through my mind, okay, I'll preach it this way. No, I think I'll preach it this way. And then it was like, why don't I preach it multiple ways? But it says a threefold cord. And I checked the other translations. And they said a cord of three strands. Now, is there a difference? Yes, and I'm going to show it to you. This right here is a cord of three strands. 
those three strands do not have the same strength as a three-fold cord. The fold part of that means that they are in fact folded together. A cord of three strands will break. And it will break a lot easier. See, our old timers knew this. This is why they braided cords together. If you have, if you have steel cord, that steel is folded together. Steel cables, they're not just straight out cables. Because then there's a weakness. Engineers know this, there's a weakness there. If you fold those cords together, those steel cords, then you have increased the strength of that cord threefold. It's three times as strong as one. That's how we use the term threefold, meaning three times more than it used to be. A threefold cord. The cords are not just individual separate cords. They are in fact folded and woven together so that there is not three separate individual cords anymore. They're all woven together. And when you are speaking of them, you are speaking them of them as part of the group. Does that make sense? Nobody says, hand me three ropes. Hand me three individual strands that I can use as a rope. They say, hand me a rope, singular. Rope is singular. But it is a plural of three individual strands that have been folded together. This is where, now I couldn't make a big case on this of why everybody ought to drop the new translations and go to the King James. But this is another reason why the King James is right. They call it archaic language, but those old timers knew what worked best. Okay? They knew what worked best. And a three-fold cord is not quickly broken. Let's tell God thank you. Heavenly Father, ask God for your blessing. Ask for your help. Lord, there's a lot of ways already, Lord, that you have established this principle in our mind. But Father, help us to understand something, Lord, that I, I know, I know, God, affects Probably everybody here. In one way or another. Because every one of us, Lord, are sinners. And every one of us has our favorite sins. The ones that we really liked doing back when we were lost. And in some cases, Father, in some cases, I know people, Lord, who have not stopped doing them. And they need help. Because that threefold cord is not quickly broken. And they need help. So, Father, help us, Lord, in this one area, in this one aspect. Give us grace and give us understanding. And, Lord, help, help everybody who listens today to know, Lord, I'm not preaching out of condemnation. I'm preaching, Lord, out of edification. Because everybody, everybody needs help with one thing or another. Some admit it easier than others. But everybody, everybody needs help. So, Father, give us grace and give us understanding. And, Lord, teach us some good, good things, Lord, that will help somebody today. Lord, help somebody out of, of a sinful habit or an addiction today. Bring deliverance to somebody. And give, us, give us grace, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Now, there's a lot of threes in the Bible. Okay, it's a lot of threes in the Bible. Three has many different meanings and different applications. All right.
so on this on this one today some of you may have already figured this out so let me set this up because you say I've already heard some of this that's fine but remember we're preaching in brand new areas today and for those that are in um, Samburu is it Samburu right where they're streaming it live Michael Turkana okay I got that wrong in Turkana, they, they've beefed up their internet, and so they're listening to this service right now while y'all are sitting here. Isn't that amazing? Okay, back 20 years ago, we had to have multi-million dollar satellite systems going. And now, because the world is connected, we can broadcast this live, and they can hear us right now while we're preaching this, all right? And then, of course, it'll be, it could be played on for many years to come. Genesis chapter 3. The Bible says, we know this in Genesis 3, we know that that is when the devil came and approached Eve with not just looking at that fruit, but actually talking her into it. Now, if I want to go back to this, Something just occurred to me. I don't know if I've ever touched on it or not. But take your Bible, turn to Genesis 3. Because I'm going to look at something that's not on my notes here. In Genesis chapter 3, as I'm looking at this, at no time does the devil ever say to her, you need to eat that fruit. Look at that. He said to her, yea, if God said, you should not eat of every tree of the garden. The woman said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He, he, it just dawned on me. He never told her to eat that. He never said that. She might have then had to say, well, he told me to do it, and I thought that was you, or I thought, but... He never, he never said, eat it. Never, never by commandment. He never even said as a suggestion, maybe you should try it. He never actually said anything like it. He just opened up to her mind the fact that she would be better off if she did. But he never said, eat this. Never did. Huh? Huh? He caused her. It's exactly right. It's what the false prophet's going to do. In the last days, he's going to cause everybody to receive a mark. He's not going to make anybody do it. And the devil never made you do anything. You did it because you wanted to do it. Now, the devil may have tricked you into thinking it was a good idea... Or that your life would somehow be better. But he never told you to do it. That was you. God of course didn't tell you to do it. The devil didn't tell you to do it. You told you to do it. So the illustration is. Number one the tree was good for food. Number two it was pleasant to the eyes. Number three desired to make one wise. In that order. Yes ma'am. Yeah, go ahead. Don't know. We don't know if Adam was standing there when the serpent approached Eve right then. We don't know that. Okay? But it no, it says... He, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also under her husband with her and he did eat. So the assumption, it could be that either way, that if he was there, she did it or she went to him when he was somewhere else and she did it. That he was with her when she gave it to him. It's all, it's all I'm seeing there. Okay. So that's, I mean, it's a good question. I don't mind you asking it. But here's the point. It was these three things in this order. 1 John 2.16, the lust of the flesh, all that is in the world, all that is in the world, 
is going to be in these three categories. The lust of the flesh, which was the tree was good for food. The lust of the eyes, pleasant to the eyes. Tree to be desired to make one wise and the pride of life. Notice that in that order. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And again, God never told you to do these things. God never said for you to do it. God's will is that you not do it. God strictly forbids you to do it. And we found out that the devil did not tell you to do it. Did not make you do it. You did it because it's what your flesh or your eyes or your pride wanted you to do. So it all comes out that sin is all on you. And I'm going to preach on the threefold cord of sinful habits. See, they used to call it, back in old days, they used to call it sinful habits. Then it became addictions. They took the word sin out of it. Well, this is an addiction that they have. Okay? Uh, nowadays, it's, well, he's being treated for this. Or she's getting treatment for this. Like the American Medical Association officially years ago categorized alcoholism as a disease rather than an addiction. And I do know that there are some people whose body has a different physical reaction to alcohol than other people's bodies do. I knew a couple that when God uh, got in their life and they both got right with God, they both uh, got into uh, alcohol treatment. The man quit like that. His problem was he needed to quit going to bars. And getting in fights. But her problem was different. Her body has a physical reaction to alcohol. Which means she cannot eat food that's been cooked in alcohol. She cannot take cold medicine that has alcohol in it. She cannot. She has to be very, very careful on what goes into her body. Because if it has alcohol in it, her body's going to have a reaction to that. And she's going to want to drink. So I get that in some cases, everybody is a different, but that does not excuse the first time. You know what I'm talking about, right? The first time you do it sets the addiction or the habits in progress. If you don't do it, then you won't have the habit of doing it. Am I still preaching that? Is that still right? If you stay away from it, you'll never have a problem with it. You say, well, how will I know if I have a reaction to alcohol the way this person you're talking about? Don't find out. Don't find out. Because if you do, you may not like it. You may not get the help. Because this Bible is right. The three-fold cord is not quickly broken. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. So whether you call them sinful habits, or whether you now call them addictions, or whether it's a disease and you need treatment for it, or whatever it is, it is still sin. God still hates it. The wages of that sin is death and not just one death, the second death. The wages of your sin is the second death, which is the lake of fire. God still hates it. And God still says don't do it. And there's still punishment whether, whether you have an addiction or a disease. God still says the punishment's the lake of fire. So you can excuse your habits. 
You can dismiss your habits. You can act like you don't like you don't have a problem, but you do have a problem. Let me go over these. Lamentations chapter one. Turn your Bible there, and I want you to underline this. Boy, this Bible's right. In Lamentation, Jeremiah wrote this. He said, the yoke of my transgressions is bound by his hand. Transgressions, I don't care what you call it. You're yoked to it. You're stuck to it. And you're bound by that cord. That three-fold cord. It's a yoke. They are wreathed. Notice that in your Bible. They're wreathed. What does that mean? Folded together like a wreath. And come up upon my neck. Take a look at that picture I have up there. What is that called? A noose. To my knowledge, there's only one purpose. They call it a hangman's noose. They are wreathed about your neck. That's what it says. They are wreathed and come up upon my neck. He hath made my strength to fall. The Lord hath delivered me into their hands from whom I am not able to rise up. Now, here's what I want to say to you. I don't care where you got help from. I don't care to how many meetings you went to. And I don't care if you're saved or lost. If you used to have the habit of drinking alcohol and you don't anymore, that was still by the grace of God whether you are saved or not. Because the... God calls it, calls it to rain on the just and the unjust. And there are people in this world who have done terrible things, who are not saved, and yet they receive the grace and the benefits of living in this world. And sometimes God does good things for them. And what I'm saying to you is that whatever the sinful habit is, it cannot be broken but by God. Cannot be broken but by God. You see, it's a threefold cord that is not quickly broken. Meaning that you can't, you can't drink alcohol for years. And then just easily walk away from it because one day you woke up and said, yeah, I'm done with this. It doesn't taste good anymore. Or I'll say drugs. If you used to take drugs and you don't take drugs anymore, that was by God's grace. That was God delivering you from that. Whether you admit it or not. Even you say, no, I checked into a treatment center and they got me through. And that was still the grace of God that you're not doing it no more. What I'm saying to you is. You started the habit. And then you worked the habit and it became to where you couldn't easily break it yourself. You had to have help of some kind. Because. If you can do it one day and not do it the next, then I don't think it really can, I don't think it's really called a habit or an addiction or a disease or whatever they call it nowadays. You say, Pastor, you're preaching as church people. Why? You tell me why. Uh, so, Take a look at the noose here for a minute because that's where you're headed. The noose 
was for the condemnation of people who had violated the law. And the truth of it is, when you develop sinful habits and you do not get them under the grace and the blood of Jesus Christ, you're condemned and they'll kill you. So what are these? Number one, let's look at lust of the flesh. These are the desires, things that our body desires in some form or another. Fornication. This nation is addicted to fornication. There's even a song that came out, what, in the 80s, Addicted to Love? Do you not know what that song's about? Okay, you're not addicted to love. You're addicted to fornication. And you can't stop. Mick Jagger sings, I can't get no satisfaction. He was addicted to it, and maybe still is. As old was he, 80 now? Good grief. Fornication. This nation is a very fornicating adulterous country it's being fed to us non-stop by television advertisements magazine advertisements and internet advertisements and or radio advertisements and or movies films tv shows things that are on the internet it's being fed to people non-stop Uh, actor David Duchovny, who played a character in the X-Files, who was known for watching porn all the time. His character, that was his character was, that he was watching porn all the time, actually had to check himself into a treatment center because he was addicted to fornication. And he made a, he made a TV show called Californication. Art becomes life. Adultery. There are people who once they commit the act of adultery, stepping out on a marriage, that they become addicted to it, and they constantly step out on their wife or their husband. They don't stop because, number one, they don't want to stop. And then they find out that they can't stop. Even if they get caught, they can't. And they usually don't. Any kind of lascivious behavior, lewd behavior, where... You have a man at the workplace who's always putting his hands on women. Giving them hugs and he makes it look like it's an innocent thing. Oh, you know, we're close. We're like brothers and sisters. He's a dirty man who can't stop putting his hands on women. His behavior is always driven to lewdness. Wine is strong drink. I get amen? amen. Wine is strong drink. They are lust of the flesh because wine and vodka and tequila and beer to some extent, and you get a little high off of it, get a buzz off of it. And you get to where you like that, but then you find out that one drink doesn't do it anymore. Because it's two drinks, and then it's five drinks, and then it's ten. And then it's a bottle, and a bottle's not doing it. A bottle is just keeping you from going into delirium tremens. A bottle is just keeping you from becoming sick and shaking and having delirious visions. 
Along with that are drugs, both illegal, and I'm including marijuana. I don't care if they legalize it or not. And or prescription. Now, I'm not talking about your blood pressure medicine. Blood pressure medicine, to my knowledge, there's not an addiction to where people get hooked on it. <laughs> I need my blood pressure medicine, man. <laughs> Come on, I'm sick, man. It doesn't make them high. Painkillers does. People get hooked on that. So whether it's prescription, legal, or illegal, marijuana, cocaine, methamphetamine, heroin, LSD, anything in between, ecstasy, angel dust, spice, bath salts, guys that sniff paint or glue, that makes them crazy. So, how is it that you don't get hooked on cocaine? Don't do it. How is it you don't get hooked on methamphetamine? Don't do it the first time, because I'm telling you, everybody that gets hooked on meth was hooked after the first time. First try. And there are people listening to me right now that are hooked on drugs. Laziness is an addiction. It's a habit. It's a sinful habit. Laziness is a sinful habit. Can I, can I hear somebody say amen to that? Listen, God says, I've given you six days to do something. What was that? Work. Work. And I'm all for, like our group home guys and people who are legitimately disabled. I'm all for them getting a handout. There are people who are disabled who refuse it. Because they'd say, I'd rather work. But we know we have a serious problem in this country of fake disabilities. And it's because people don't want to work. And laziness is a bad habit to get into. So is idleness. What was the sin of Sodom? Does anybody know? There were three things that God said was the sin of Sodom in Ezekiel 16. Pride. Fullness of bread. Abundance of idleness. You want me to tell you what's in that? What's in idleness? You see, nobody just sits and goes all day long unless they're high. Or what? Wait a minute. Let me do it differently. Am I right? There are people hooked on Facebook. Believe it or not, they have recovery programs for people who are hooked on this. Gluttony. 
Gluttony is lust of the flesh. What time is it? Good grief. I'm not even going to get through the first one. Gluttony is the lust of the flesh. Filthy communications or cursing or taking the Lord's name in vain is the lust of the flesh. Why? Because it feels good when you say it. Nobody ever says Mississippi when they're really mad. Nobody ever calls somebody a lamb when they're mad at them. You lamb! See, it, it doesn't work. But when we call people names, curse words, or vulgar names, and I have scripture to back this up. Let no filthy communication proceed from your mouth, the Bible says. Why? Or taking the Lord's name in vain. That people get hooked on it. They, they say, well, they don't have any other way of talking. They wouldn't have had that way of talking had they never talked that way before. They got used to it and they got to liking it. And that's the only way that they want to talk. They can straighten their voice up, their mouth up. They just don't want to. It, because it feels good to them. It's a lust of the flesh. You can call it what you want. Lust of the eyes. Pornography. Pornography is huge in this world. It is huge. And don't act like you don't do it. Or don't act like you've never done it. Covetousness. Every commercial that's on TV or on the internet draws us to covetousness. And it's an addiction. This, we, we think, this is why we have Black Friday. We have Black Friday for covetousness. When they, when they go and fight over a 60 inch flat panel television, it's not because they were going to give it to their grandma. They want that because it's on sale and that's going to go in their house. They bought themselves a gift. That's covetousness. It's lust of the eyes. Materialism in every form that materialism comes in. Doesn't matter if it's new cars or new tools or new makeup things or new house or new things for the house. It is materialism. It is covetousness. It is the lust of the eyes. It is, ooh, that would look good in my house. Or that would look good on my car. Or that would look nice on my computer. Too much television. And I have slash YouTube, slash Netflix, slash video games, slash Hulu, slash, 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 slash. The devil has a million things to put in front of your eyes that you just stare at all day long. Pride of life. Ownership. Ownership. Owning things is a pride of life. It is. Look at what I have. See that? I own that. Trophies and or awards are prides of life. Now, I don't mind a little recognition every now and then, pat on the back. I think those are good things, but I want you to get what I'm getting at. Sports, a lot of our economy is driven by sports. It is driven by sports watching or sports performance or sports broadcasting. It is why two parents will get into a knockdown fist fight at a child's football game. Or why a guy will punch the coach out and get into it with the coach. My son's going to be an NFL star. You won't let him play. That's pride of life kind of stupid stuff. You see what I'm getting at now? Or when people walk all over everybody else to get that job promotion. Or to get that recognition at work. Love of money is a pride of life. Boasting, pride of life. Racism. Pride of life. Lying about others is a pride of life because it makes you look good. Gambling is a pride of life. I'm going to win. I'm going to win the next big jackpot. Political aspirations. Pride of life. Climbing the company ladder. Fraternal organization membership. These are all pride. Look what I belong to. Look who accepted me. 
Well, I'm in the Kiwis Club, and I'm in the Moose Club, and I'm in the, I'm in the uh, whatever club. I'm in all these clubs. They took me in. And that's a pride of life thing. And people get addicted to it. So, hold on, I'm not done. Can you read that? Are you addicted to it? You say, Pastor, that's not a sin. No, but are you addicted to it? What has control over you? That's tobacco. I don't, for some of you. What's wrong? You can't read my writing? T O B A C C O. Well, it's uh, some of you are addicted to time, so I'm going to cut this out here in a little bit. That wasn't a joke. But I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand on if I mentioned what you're guilty of. Because that's not why I did it. I preach this so that you'll know and understand that your addiction is just as bad as everybody else's is. Now, on... This third one here, I really feel sorry for you people. I feel more sorry for you people than I do the drug and alcohol and tobacco users. Because eventually those things, they start affecting our health or they start affecting our relationships and everything else. And then we know we need to get out of them. But the pride people, nobody can tell you what's wrong with you. Nobody can. Because you say, I don't have these problems here. Therefore, I'm better than these people are. But I will say to you that your threefold cord is probably harder to break because you have a noose around your neck and you don't realize it. See, God, God will love and feel sorry for all of these people here. But Jesus dealt with these people and he dealt with them very harshly. They were the Sadducees and the Pharisees. The, relig the religious crowd that were too proud to recognize that they had a Messiah right in front of them. And they said, we're children of Abraham. You hear the pride? So they belong to a club. We're the children of Abraham. And they would not bow to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because of it. God resists the proud, but He gives grace to everybody else. So... I'm not done with this, but I'm going to let you done. I'm going, to, I'm going to let you off for a minute. So I want us to bow our heads, okay? And by the way, if you don't think I have scripture for all these, get your Bible out. Because I can look every one of them up and show them to you. There's scripture for all of this. And you have a threefold cord of sinful things that you do. In fact, I'll say this. You know what the pride of life is? It is breaking both the first and second great commandments that our Savior gave to us. Love the Lord your God with all your heart because you love yourself. You love yourself more than you love God and you love yourself more than you love your neighbor.
I'm not preaching down to you today because I have things on this list. And I know just how difficult a threefold cord is to break. So, next Sunday, if God allows it, we'll preach a little bit on breaking the threefold. He didn't say the threefold cord was impossible to break. He says not quickly broken. Which means that it, you don't just wake up one day free. It takes time. With some people, it's going to take a lifetime. 